Joe, how much faster are you than Dak Nostein? <laughs> much, much faster. Much, much faster. <laughs> how beneficial is it having a guy like him in your corner? He seems like he's not afraid to tell you exactly what he thinks versus maybe what you want to hear all the time. Yeah, Dak is instrumental in my success. You know, I've been working with him since really I was 14, 15. I uh, played for my dad. And so he knows my body, knows how I like to work. You know, we have the same mentality. So uh, he gets me right every, every off season and you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without him. Okay, I am joined with Dak Notstein. He is the director of performance at Black Sheep Performance. Um, and before that, he was at Ohio University as the director of strength and conditioning um, before 2021. And you also, as I understand it, Dak, you were initially a walk-on at OU playing defensive end. And then by your senior year, you were a captain, correct? That's, that's correct. Now this does not surprise me. We're talking to you because you train Joe Burrow and he trusts you with his body, but I'm not surprised that he is close with you because it sounds like for you to go on that journey to be a walk-on to then a captain by your senior year, I'm guessing that took a lot of work and a lot of work ethic as well. Will you just tell me about that journey before we get started? Yeah, growing up in a uh, small town, Ohio, um, Bell Fountain, Ohio, and um, not a lot of recruiting that came out of there, but one of the coaches that seemed pretty interested in at least me as an athlete was was a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Burrow. And yep. uh, yeah, he uh, we kept in touch throughout. And when it was evident that I was going to walk on somewhere, um, I just trusted the vision that he put out in front and then what he and Coach Solich um, were trying to build. And uh yeah, fast forward that the story worked out the way it did. But yeah, there were a lot of ups and downs on the way. And um, man, it was an awesome opportunity, but um, a great staff to play under, learn from, and then work alongside. So just kind of a whirlwind of, of events, no doubt. And how did you then become the director of performance for Black Sheep Performance? How did that all come about for you? So my, my wife was working for SC Cincinnati at the time and uh, was riding a really good wave with all the things that Cincinnati had going. Um, and I was looking for a reason to to leave Athens to join her in Cincinnati. And uh, it's just funny how the world works that Joe ends up getting drafted. And uh, through a conversation, he just says, you want to be my guy? And I'm like, well, I don't know quite what you mean by that, but sure, let's... <laughs> Let's see how this goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I finished up my final season, unfortunately, the, the COVID season at Ohio University, but um, knowing that I had uh, quite an opportunity to, to go after in Cincinnati. And then I met with um, Patrick Coyne, who's, who's the owner of Black Sheep Performance, via a mutual friend of, of Sam Hubbard. Um, yeah. He had told Joe about the gym. And so uh, Pat and I talked about what we wanted to accomplish and, and what the vision was moving forward. And uh, we were on the same page. So it just all seemed to fit. And I believe you and I are around the same age. I think we're both a little bit older than Joe Burrow. <laughs> yeah. I have a few years on him. <laughs> so how old were you and how old was he when you guys initially met? Cause I feel like you guys have been, you guys go back a ways, don't you? Yeah. I mean, he was always around the facility growing up. He and, all his his friends um but yeah once i had finished my my master's degree i was i was working as a graduate assistant and then worked into a part-time strength position that yeah. we prior prior did not have um so i was working for working for a few peanuts and it was just a way to have uh income on the side as well as help um anybody and everybody in the community that that wanted to wanted to train. So I was just trying to stay busy. And, um, you know, a, a motto of my life has been, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I'll be the first to attest that that kind of played, played out for me in, in that instance. So. I fully agree with that. I love yeah. that mantra that you have. Uh, we're kind of the same way in my house as well. <laughs> um, 
I would love to talk to you about Joe Burrows, just the way he approaches the offseason. It seems like he and Jamar seem kind of the same to me, where it it seems like they like to work out. They enjoy training. They enjoy, they are very diligent about their sleep, their nutrition. Um, how does he usually approach the offseason once the season has concluded? He doesn't waste any time. <laughs> so that's our biggest <laughs> that's, that's our biggest point of contention, honestly, yeah. is how how long to take off before we get back after it. But um, you know, I don't know specifically um the things with Jamar, but I know that Jamar's dedicated and his uh proof of work speaks for itself. But it's, in terms of Joe, um yeah, I mean, he's diligent. He's on top of things. He's got a litany of things that he wants to specifically work on. And, and it, you know, he's, he's always looking for a way to level up. I mean, I think the community and, and all the fans realize that, that he's in this for the long haul and wants to be the best version of himself that he can possibly be for as long as he possibly can. So um, that's kind of the, the top idea. And then everything, you know, building up to that is situational and, you know, some short term and some longer term. So, but he lays out a, a blueprint for what he's expecting, and then us as a team, we all kind of sit down and and work our our specific magic on on what we think is is the best scenario and the best plan of action, and and then we roll. How often per week, I guess, did you guys work together in the last off season before the twenty twenty three season got started? So depending on where we're at in the year um, will depend on what, what specifically we're, we're focusing on. But um, four to five times a week is generally what he likes to do. He doesn't like to deviate from his schedule, whatever is set, then he kind of tries to stick with it. Um, you know, he when it comes to not only just the training regime, he wants to know nutritionally what he can do better. He, he takes, I mean, as you can see, a high priority on his sleep habits um, and, you know, with if he gets to the point where he doesn't feel like he's slept well enough, then he lets me know. I mean, he's a pro's pro, um, and, and communication, you know, when we're really doing our thing, he does a phenomenal job at, and it makes my job certainly a lot easier. Um, but you know, when it comes to the nutrition aspect of things, he's really focused on, um, you know, well-rounded whole food meals. He doesn't do a lot of supplementation or, anything that you might see other guys, um, kind of, kind of report on, um, he's pretty straight laced and, and very dedicated and, um, doesn't skip meals, doesn't skip sleep. He, he takes it very seriously and, you know, he makes my job, you know, for the most part, pretty easy. So. I noticed that he would, I, I guess I had an inclination that he was serious about his nutrition because when I first saw him in the locker room, I think it was 2021 is when we were allowed back in. He had a microwave next to his locker and he has his chef meal all ready to go. And I'm like, all right, this guy's, this guy's taking it pretty serious. Yeah. He's not I messing around. Just kind of who he is though. I mean, everything yeah. is important to him. If there's any way that he can possibly be a little bit better, he's going to absolutely try his hand at it, especially when it's something as simple as being dedicated to what you're, what you're putting in your body. He wants it for the long term, So, um, you know, we try and give him ideas and, you know, he set himself up in positions to where he, he doesn't have to think about it as much. So, Was there anything this past offseason that he wanted to get better at? Like he's already one of the one of the top quarterbacks, along with Patrick Mahomes, of course, um, Josh Allen, guys like that. He's already up in that level with them. But is there anything that he was specifically trying to get better at before the 2023 season? Oh yeah, we had a litany of things. Um, you know, my my thing is always how can we can we build up the armor as much as we possibly can because yeah. you know he is going to take take some shots and just the way he plays the game is a physical way of playing. Um, so so I would always like him a little bigger than what he is, but um, again, he's just so focused and dedicated on every aspect. He knows where he wants to stay within. We work within those those ranges, and that's just just what it is. Um, but this year, a main focus, um, unfortunately we didn't get to see it in the first few games, but he really wanted to improve his speed. And I know he always gets so excited when he hits a certain speed at practice and everything. He's quick to get on the, get on the phone and let me know how much faster he is than, than me. So. (laughs) 
wait, how much faster is he than you? Well, uh, there's never been a race, but I think <laughs> my time has passed me of ever beating him. So I should have hit him when he was in high school, you know? So. <laughs> well, and when you think about his job, he's got to be, he's got to be quick to evade, especially to evade the sack. If you got a six foot seven, sometimes 300 pound guy chasing after you. I, I would feel like you would need to have a lot of muscle and you need to be fast in that situation. Um, it looked like he was working on explosiveness and stuff like that too. Cause in May, I remember seeing him doing sprints and, um, it seemed like he was improved in that area. Yeah. I mean, we, we really felt good about where we, where we had him, uh, set up and, you know, unfortunately sometimes things happen and, um, luckily he's so resilient of a guy that, um, you know, it's okay. Now what, and how do we go from here? And, you know, what's, what's the saying, a quick short-term memory is just on to the next thing. And, you know, um, as Jocko Welling says, good, right. This is the, what I'm presented with now, what am I going to do with the hand I'm dealt? And, uh, you know, no matter what is thrown his way, he seems to be ready for whatever trials and tribulations are there. And then I think, you know, in the long run, um, optimistically, I think it all makes him better. It makes him work on something that otherwise might have not been touched on. So um, he sees the bigger picture. And, you know, certainly that's that's definitely something that we talk about when we're when we're discussing anything is just the long term plan and, and what we need to do to to set him up for success and and you know hopefully um we can we can keep building on that and i was happy to see last week and really showcase the ability that he has um and some of that's intangible i mean i'm not going to sit here and say that that's that's everything that we do but we definitely try and put him in situations that are going to be similar to where he'll find himself on the field and and quick reaction and getting the most out of each and every step that that he can so um it was good to see him go out there and showcase it as well as show a little fire. Cause you know, sometimes he's always just so straight laced and it's hard <laughs> to get a read on him. So it, it definitely fired me up. Yeah. He completing 87 and a half percent of his passes as well on Sunday, I believe. Um, and for me, what as a spectator watching, it looked like he was back to the normal, the not, vintage Joe, but just Joe, what does that say about, I guess, his commitment level and his willingness to put his body on the line for the betterment of the team? Yeah. I mean, that's just a testament to how he was raised. Both his parents, I mean, are phenomenal people is, you know, his brothers, I definitely think probably gave him a little, little pressure to go out there and perform, but Joe's he's tough. I mean, Nobody's going to take that away from him. He's going to go out there and, and try and represent for his team, his family, his city as, as much as he can, um, no matter the circumstance. And I think that, you know, this is just another another chapter in the book of many more chapters to be written. But um, certainly, I mean, he just is so, so, I know I come back to this word, but he's resilient in every sense of the word. And I think his discipline and everything outside um, allow him to to come back maybe better than ever. So was he, I'm not sure how, um, obviously I, I don't know how much you guys communicate during the season, but it seemed like he was getting closer and closer to feeling a hundred percent. Um, when they played the Seahawks before the bye. it seemed like he was inching closer towards his normal style of play. Um, could you guess how well he felt during that week? Uh, yeah, but he's very, very tight lipped, you know, even I know <laughs> that's why I'm asking me, you who's, who's pretty close to him. Um, yeah, I don't get a whole lot. So <laughs> sometimes I have to work my other streams to get a, a little bit, bit more info, but, um, no, I mean, it was, it was pretty clear that, um, things were trending the right way. And, um, yeah, I'm just happy to see him go out there and, and showcase, the athleticism that he that he does have and just man when he is on the run and has room um that's that's tough to play defense against so hopefully we'll see plenty more of that the rest of the season and i would love to get into the mental side of things with him because i remember the first year or the first time meeting him 
I, I asked him if it was weird to have media in the locker room and the now because his first year in COVID media was not allowed in. Um, so he wasn't really hit with the full force of media that surrounds him during practice and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, my gosh, it's so weird. I'm still trying to get used to it. How does he how did he deal with going from the COVID year where he was kind of in a bubble to now, I mean, he's one of the most talked about players within the NFL. I don't think he can do a single thing without somebody seeing or noticing what he's doing. I think you're exactly right. And it's kind of uh, oh. astonishing to witness. I mean, <laughs> yeah. because you you do have to level up in terms of things outside of the game. Um, and and I think that that can be, can be tougher on, on some people more than others. And I know that you know, if I were in his shoes, I would I would struggle because you really do have to turn yourself a little bit more extroverted and you have to be, you know, camera facing a lot more and mm-hmm. diligent in the things you say. And, um, you know, I just I just yeah, it's I always enjoy watching um, the the adaptability he's he's had with with dealing with the media a lot more. And then, you know, I don't know that there's a certain expectation, but certainly I know he holds himself to a certain standard to be um, the forward facing person to the media and to the youth and to um, the general public on, on just how to be a good person. Um, so I think, I think he's done a phenomenal job and with each year having more expectation with that role. Um, yeah, certainly for me would be incredibly stressful. So I can't imagine, you know, how how he deals with it but yeah he's done a phenomenal job and then you see it how it you know reflects in the locker room those guys do do some amazing things just yeah i think that's a little bit on the backing of of what he brings to a locker room the person he is and and what he stands for i mean it makes it a little bit easier to to lay it on the line for somebody you completely trust him definitely and i i only say this and you can call me off if i'm wrong but i only say this because i'm kind of this way too is he in naturally an introvert and then he has to work on unless he's with you know his teammates who he's comfortable with he has to work on being a little bit more extroverted when he is in big crowds or around people he doesn't know outside of his teammates yeah i would say you know a lot more are that way right a lot more yeah. athletes are that way we we play the sport because we enjoy it so much what comes with it as a side is sometimes um, a learned process, but yeah, I mean, I don't think that people would, would assume otherwise, but yeah, I would say he's, he's pretty introverted and he's pretty, you know, he keeps things, like I said, very, very close to his chest, but, um, yeah, I think he does a tremendous job when it, when he's called on to, to be the leader and to be the vocal guy. From your perspective, since he entered the NFL, how do you think that he has evolved um, his game, who he is as a person, just overall? How do you think he's evolved from year one? Um, yeah, he just sees a bigger and bigger picture, right? Like I think yeah. when you initially go into it, everything is new. So it's just like when you're going from high school to college, Right, you know, probably the speed and the athleticism is another thing I have to adapt to, as well as the terminology and all the things I've got to put in my head. And then um, there, it's not like you have a, a freshman or sophomore year to develop. It's expected of you now, and um, how quickly you can get those guys around you to to rally and and play to the level that's being expected of you. Um, I just think he's gotten better each year um, in every aspect of being a leader um when it comes to the you know lead by example but as well as being a little more vocal and then um i think he does a great job of holding people to a a certain standard and doing it the right way you know yeah so i I would say that's that's the big evolution that that i i have seen um but yeah i mean it's it's been awesome to see the transformation so far but i think that there's there's still more levels and just the way he approaches everything he he's pretty competitive so i'm sure he'll want to <laughs> really? be, be the best um that he can possibly be in every facet of whatever you know his career requires so nobody who's going to watch this is going to believe that you just said that he's competitive no one's seen that at all in the last four years right. 
<laughs> does he have a favorite a favorite workout like is he a guy who just he comes to the gym and he's like we're doing deadlifts today i want to work on deadlifting or is he is he more of an like what is his favorite routine i mean i've i've forced a change i think <laughs> okay um, i mean but but he again you know we yeah it, it is and it's necessary especially when we we have that long-term plan in place um but yeah i mean he has certain things that he he likes to do i mean he always likes to up his squat he likes to um you know pump the arms up a little bit which i mean was getting a little not notoriety in the yes. in the spring there um but you know i mean it's it's we're not he's not trained to be a bodybuilder he's not trained to be a power lifter or any other you know fashion of training we try and create a program that that works on his weakest points. So, you know, as much as he likes the aspect of training, there are definitely some days he comes in and he's like, do we have to do that? But that's what I think he should do, you know? And, um, you know, we do a lot more unilateral training as opposed to bilateral. We're trying to even the right to the left. And because he plays a position where he's pretty one-sided that we try and even things out a little bit the best we can. And again, but the, the plan is adaptable, but, it's pretty consistent year to year with the things that he feels and the ways that he can improve his career. And we just try and basically create that, that roadmap each year with a few tweaks here and there, but there's not been a, a ton of ch change, but um, you know, he's, he's pretty, pretty awesome to train, but again, he doesn't say too much. I mean, he's it, it's anything, no, <laughs> no, no, he's, he's That's about good. it. And so yeah, he's a true, true leader out there and you know i i love you know he came back early on in his career and he was talking about how he was benching with uh some of the linemen i'm like you probably shouldn't shouldn't do that often but it was good that he could at least in in his uh opinion hang with the big guys so that was that was pretty cool but he again he does a good enough job in in the training that you know we we try and squeeze out as much as we can of, of the sponge each year to to help give him the opportunity to go out there and do the amazing things that he's capable of was it sam hubbard that talked him into benching with the linemen Is that I, I don't know the backstory he just said yeah i was hanging with the big guys today i was like good for you man that's awesome but <laughs> okay. let's let's you gotta throw a football so let's back off that for now um <laughs> there's a time and place so that was funny how much time do you spend working on a program for him? Because I know it's not just one day and then you forget it. I'm I'm sure it's a long term type of thing you work on with him throughout the off season. How much time does it take to formulate a plan for him? I don't I don't know the overall time. It just because even now I'm thinking of things that I want to want to work on and and adapt and change for for next season and. Um, you know, just like him, I, w I want to see him succeed as much as humanly possible. So um, I'm going to pick apart where where we went wrong and could have been better and then um, kind of start back at what I thought square one was and then um, create a better plan and better program. And so, it, so it's, it's, you know, I mean, I just woke up <laughs> the other night and had to write some notes down for an idea I had in a dream. So um, I don't know that there's a time, time frame. I just, yeah, it's, you know, leading up to when it's time to go, um, you know, I'll spend, I'll spend weeks to a month getting that program ironed out, but it's always evolving and ever changing. So, well, might be one week, you know, six weeks down the line, we may never see it. It may go longer on the previous phase or we might switch earlier. So just depends on what we're feeling at the, the moment and how he feels. So. It sounds like a, a an ever evolving type of plan that just continues throughout the day, and I know <clears throat> I promised you twenty five minutes, so I'm not gonna. I'm not. I know you have other clients coming up, and you have people to to train you, work to do. But I wanted to know because I remember when he had the appendectomy, and people were on him about losing weight and stuff like that. He couldn't control that because he just had an appendectomy. He didn't have a choice. How pissed was he when he was losing weight because of the surgery? I imagine he would be pretty pissed because I'm sure it took a while to put that on. Yeah, certainly 
last year was frustrating. This year was frustrating. I mean, it's not, it's not ideal in, in any circumstance. Um, but again, like he's just so adaptable and he just doesn't hang on to it very long. Like he'll have his few days of being frustrated, but okay, so what's the plan? What are we doing now? And, and let's go. It's always, you know, forward thinking and, you know, he just doesn't stay, stay stuck. Um, so, you know, that's a shout out to him. And again, the way he was raised and, um, just seeing, seeing the bigger picture and believing in, in the process, if you will. So, um, you know, I, yeah, certain frustrations with that scenario, but again, it, it could be worse. Right. So, yeah. um, I mean, it, it, it's just, the game is crazy and things can happen at any given moment. So you just try and do the best you can with the hand you're dealt in the given scenario. And I think that he does such an amazing job of that. And um, certainly Cincinnati is lucky to have a guy like that leading the squad. Yeah, it sounds like he is very lucky to have you alongside him who pays attention because he's mentioned multiple times about how you pay attention to his body and how his body is looking out on the field. You pay special attention to how he looks and how he plays. So I'm sure having someone like you in his corner is is very helpful. But I, I know try, we try and give it our best, no doubt. I mean, I think we're all I mean, I think how this all happened to be was just we're cut from similar stones and understand the blue collar mentality and that things aren't given. They need to be worked for. And um, yeah, we just you got to show up every day. So definitely. Oh, OK. Don't kill me. One last question. Anything about Joe Burrow that nobody knows funny story anything about him that you're allowed to share or that you can <laughs> share that, <laughs> give us a better insight of who joe burrow is um no i don't think i can jump into those waters <laughs> just yet um that's okay no i i think i mean again i think um if i were to end it on anything though that the fact that he's completely authentic what you see is what you get with him and um it's been it's been a great ride and there's a lot more positivity and big things ahead. I mean, there's, there's goals that we need that he has set, set forth and, and we're going to do everything we can to get there. Dak, I appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, I know everyone's enjoyed this conversation as have I and a uh, good luck with Joe in the off season and good luck on your, on your note taking all season long as you watch him progress. He's going to do, I think he's going to do big things this season. So Agreed. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it.